In this video, we're going to look at the ability to add custom tags that you can use within Microsoft Clarity so that you can then filter your dashboard and your recordings. Now, this doesn't work for heat maps, but we will be able to do it for dashboard and recordings. Now, if I go ahead and I click on the filters, we've got all of these filters that I've talked about um, from the standard ones to the advanced ones in other videos and blog posts. But what we've also got at the bottom here is a section that says custom tags. And we can see it says we haven't set any tags on this project. Now, the ability to set tags means that you can actually then filter your data that you're sending back from your website into Clarity on other things. So, for example, let's say that I had um, an event page and if somebody landed on that page, I wanted to be able to pass that through as a value to, to then be able to filter and say, well, I don't care where someone's been on the website, but if they've landed on that events page, then I want to be able to, to see that they've, that they've done that and I want to be able to filter based on that information. So what we can do is if we look at this as a basic concept, this is the script that is provided to you when you're setting up Clarity to... Um, use with your website. So we can see all of the code and we can see there on the, the bottom, the third from the bottom line, where it shows that we've got, that's where your project ID would be. And then the next line, the one right before the closing script line, where it says clarity, then set key and value. That's what we'd need to add into our tracking code. Now, if we put it into the tracking code itself, that means it will fire or it will be triggered for every single page because we're putting that in the header of our website. So some things I don't necessarily want to track on every single page. There may be times where you want to have your own tag that is based on every page. It just means you're passing it back. So there isn't really much filtering necessarily going on there. So we need to, the set remains as it is. It just stays a set. Key is what we want to call the drop down filter. And then the value is what would be in the list of those filters. So if you use dynamics, think of, I was going to say option set, think of a choice um, field where you basically have given the field a name and then you are going ahead and you're putting in what are the values for that. So that's kind of the concept of it. So let's look at some examples. So what I wanted to do, if I go here and I'll show you what I've set up and then I'll explain how I did it. I wanted to be able to track on a couple of different things. So I've added some tags to my site and we can see I've got three different tags that I've added. So if I go into my website, uh, first thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to filter the data that's coming back in based on the category of the blog post that somebody was looking at. Now I use WordPress, so if you don't really know PHP or you don't really understand WordPress, it might be a little bit more challenging to do what I've done in terms of using dynamic things. So in other words, I'm not necessarily setting the, the value of the key for every single page. I'm, I want it to be set dynamically based on what someone was viewing. So what I've done is I've added in within this Right here, I've put the um, script type and then I basically closed that script tag. And in between, I've got clarity and then I've got the set and then I've got my key. And then in the rest of the quotes, I've got my value. The value is basically saying, get the category and get the name of the category for the page or the post that is being viewed. Now, depending on the way in which WordPress and your theme is set up, you would put it into maybe a single.php or something like that, depends on how your, your site is configured. Mine goes into something called content.php. If you are not sure, do not do it without checking with somebody. Um, so that's the first thing that I wanted to do. So if I now go back and I look at my tag for category, now, this was the first one, so um, um, maybe necessarily didn't necessarily do as great of a job because what I had forgotten about was the fact that on some of my posts, I'd used multiple tags. So what, sorry, multiple categories. So that what then ended up happening is this one actually shows Dynamics um, Power Platform and also Microsoft Forms Pro. And until yesterday, this was even worse. I had... Um, 
so many that it basically included multiple categories. So what I've done is I went in and I've cleaned that up. So each blog post now just has one category. So I can then say, OK, well, I want to see any of the um, uh, the widgets and the recordings that where somebody has actually visited a blog post. And let's go with the category of portals. So I would add it, click the plus and then click apply. And we can see that it's now added that as my filter. So now I can see that I have 18 distinct users, so 18 people that have actually gone to the site and viewed posts that have the category of portal. And we can see here the portal pages that have actually been viewed. Now, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this is in the URL for my blog post, I do not use the category name, so I couldn't use that as a keyword filter. This was my only option. So for me, the custom tags is fantastic for that. All right, so another thing that I wanted to be able to do is I wanted to know if um, uh, the page that was being viewed or the um, sort of the recording, in other words, that entire visit that somebody had, did they actually go and look at one of the pages that I have that includes an online form? So I have three pages. I've got a contact form, I have a subscription form, and then I have an update preferences form. So I wanted to know, okay, well, what's the journey somebody might take before they actually click on my contact form and fill it out? Or do they actually fill that out and then go and do something else afterwards? So back into my theme, this one is now on a different um, file. This is the content page.php. Again, that is likely going to be very different depending on the theme that you might be using. And what I've done here again is I wanted to set and check on the pages and see, okay, well, if it's this page, use this tag. If it's that page, use that and so on. So I have the three and what you can do is on a page, there's an ID for each of your pages um, that you can get if you go into your pages. I'll show you in just a minute, but you can basically hover and get a list of your pages. So I said, if the page is number 19, then set the key of online forms with the value of contact form. If it's 4806, set it with online forms again, and then update preferences as the value. And finally, if it's 489, set the key again as online forms and the value of subscription. So again, if I go back into clarity and I go back to my filters and the custom tags now, I can look at online forms and there are the three options. Now that's a little bit easier that it didn't get messy at all because um, I was clearly stating what those values should be rather than dynamically creating the value. Instead, what I was doing is I was checking what the page was first and then I was clearly stating this is the value that you should use for that. Now, just so that you know what I'm talking about, if you've never seen that each of your pages and posts have an ID, if I go now to a list of my pages and I hover my mouse over where it says edit, right at the very bottom, you might not be able to see, but it basically has a URL string and it says post equals and then this one, the post equals 3626. So that's how I got the ID. All right. So the last one um, was I wanted an, a way in which to filter by traffic that was coming through if somebody was a subscriber, yes or no. And by subscriber, I mean somebody that has gone out and said that they want to receive my newsletter by email. They've subscribed. They're basically within a tool that I use um, and that's called ConvertKit. And with that, what happens, and this is the same with a lot of different marketing tools and programs, what happens is when somebody goes ahead and you send them an email and they click on links within that, it passes through a parameter onto the end of that URL. And in the case of ConvertKit, it puts um, something called uh, something that says CK under source subscriber ID, something like that. So I thought, I wonder if I can go ahead and actually grab that parameter. And if the parameter exists, let's say that yes, they're a subscriber. Otherwise, let's say no. So if I go back here, we can see that I can then add this script. And again, I'm saying, clarity set and then the key I'm using is subscriber and then what I'm doing is again in between the quotes that's essentially my value but what I'm doing is I'm checking and saying get the URL that somebody's on 
and then check to see if this CK subscriber ID is included. Um, if it's not equal to false, so in other words, if it does exist, then we basically are going to send back the value of yes. If it doesn't, we're going to send back the value of no. So again, that then allows me to say, all right, well, I want to look at some visits or some recordings, but I want to see those um, from people that are subscribers. So where are people going to? So I know that I've got, at the, based on me adding this just yesterday, I've got six people that have gone to visit pages that essentially have clicked on a link from an email. So I know that those people are subscribers. So three different, slightly different ways in which you can do it. Um, but definitely setting things dynamically, I think is extremely valuable, especially with the way in which websites are created now, where you most people are using some kind of content management system. WordPress is the most popular one um, to use. So a lot of people have that as their blog. So being able to set those dynamically is really, really important and valuable, I think, to be able to then actually use these custom tags in a um, uh, logical and meaningful way. So one thing to keep in mind, if I go ahead and I now add in a category um, and I pick a specific category, um, I've got no idea if this actually will show anything, but if I go ahead and add portals again and then apply it, no, I don't have anything. What this is doing is this is um, basically creating an and. So it must have subscriber, yes, and it also must have category of portals. So keep that in mind if you're setting those. If those filters don't really go together, then don't use them together. Um, so you, you are creating an and statement rather than saying subscriber, yes, or portals and all that kind of thing. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something that you think you'll start using and actually setting up and creating custom tags? Um, I'm really excited about this feature. I think it's fantastic that I can do that and I can decide how I want to filter my data. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.